I've seen so many people that are having babies that were due at the same time as me. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Holly and today we are doing my 29 week pregnancy update. So I do motherhood videos, I love sharing my experiences with you guys and hopefully helping other mums, especially first time mums. This is my fourth pregnancy now. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below and let's get started. So first let's talk about what baby has been up to at 29 weeks. So apparently in this last week, baby has reached close to birth height. So in terms of length and stuff, which is crazy to think about that the size that baby is inside me right now. So the main thing in terms of growing and stuff over the next, from now until birth, is actually putting the weight on. And they can double or possibly even triple their weight. So that's crazy to think that they're kind of the, the length, but they're not like the chunkiness that they will be when they're born. Um, so yeah, that is what they are up to this week. And also, baby could apparently be smiling as well, which is crazy to think about, which, especially considering really babies don't tend to smile until they're about six weeks old, but obviously they're now having the muscle strength and muscle memory, I guess. I'm not really sure what makes them be able to smile. I just read it and thought, oh, that's just so cute. And it's um, obviously when they're first born, they do smile, but it's like a gassy smile. Um, I've got some adorable pictures from the first week of when our last baby was born and they're like big, huge grins. And it's, it's so cute to see them doing that, even though actually, you know, it's probably them passing wind, but it's crazy to think that inside already right now that they could be smiling. Um, so that's my favorite developmental thing this week that is happening with baby. So that's pretty much everything that I have to say about baby's development this week. So I know that was short and sweet, but obviously it is adorable just to like think about baby smiling and stuff. So hopefully that made you guys smile and we will move on now to talk about my physical pregnancy symptoms. So more than anything, I wouldn't say I've had loads of like symptoms per se, like you would class like in the first trimester or anything. It's more just a case of it's difficult moving around, which I've mentioned before, and obviously it's just gonna get worse, but it is just really difficult to move about and stuff, and it's making it really hard with like trying to take all the Halloween decorations down, and I'm desperately excited to get Christmas decorations up, but I know that's gonna just have to be a slow and steady process because my body, like even trying to tidy up in general and maintain the house and watch after two kids, like getting up and down after them, tidying up after them, it's just really difficult and physically manoeuvring and also from an exhaustion point of view, it's really hard maintaining physical activity. So that's one thing I've really struggled with in this last week. I do think with baby getting bigger as well that that has caused some indigestion and heartburn that I've had, but it's not been unbearable. I did actually have an incident in my last pregnancy where I thought I was having a heart attack and I was literally, it was so bad it actually, the pain made me throw up, which I've never ever had pain like that before. So I didn't think that it was anything pregnancy related because it just seemed so severe. Okay, sorry, my camera just died, but yeah, basically, it's not been unmanageable. It's definitely not been as bad as that one incident last time. I've just taken Gaviscon whenever I've needed it, and it's just quite easily dissipated and been fine. It's just one of them niggly things that is unfortunately just a part and parcel of pregnancy. And they do say the more heartburn you have that you can have a baby that has more hair. So fingers crossed, we've still never seen hair on a scan yet. I keep forgetting to ask, so maybe if I remember at the next scan, I will ask if they can actually see whether baby has any hair this time. And another unpleasant side effect of having baby kind of being quite big now and sitting on nerves and stuff and just pushing down is unfortunately varicose veins which is in a very intimate area which when I've googled it is completely normal and actually when I think about it I have had this in my last pregnancy I'm not sure about my other two but definitely my last pregnancy and it did completely resolve itself as soon as baby was born. Um, but this time it seems to have been just a bit more painful and uncomfortable. So it's something I'm going to discuss with the midwife. I think I have a midwife appointment next week where I will be getting the whooping cough vaccine. I got the flu jab 
last week I think and then I get the whooping cough vaccine next week which then protects me and baby as far as I'm aware um, but I will mention it to her then it's just one of them wonderful symptoms of basically it's just part and parcel of pregnancy and I'm just relieved to know that at least in theory it will go away once baby is born and there is not a huge weight pressing down. That is one thing that has been a little bit of a niggly new symptom that seems to be have developed but it's nothing unmanageable, it's just uncomfortable and a bit more sore than I remember from my last pregnancy. My rib pain that I actually mentioned a couple of weeks ago has still been very hit and miss. I'm still having to put a lot of cushions around myself. But I have found that car journeys and stuff, I've managed to rejiggle my seat and kind of change the position of my seat and it seems a lot better, thankfully. So touch wood that um, it will continue to just be manageable. It, it doesn't seem to be flaring up half as bad. So I am just grateful that I'm, I haven't been in intense pain like I was the other week. So generally physical symptom wise it's been a pretty easy week it's just more the maneuvering about that's been my biggest issue at 29 weeks and now moving on we will talk a little bit about my mental health over the past week so I actually had at the start of this week a really really bad mental health crisis one of the worst I've had in a long time I don't want to go into too much detail I don't want to talk about the specifics of what happened I just ended up in a very bad place and then afterwards because I'd been so erratic I actually did have concerns about baby's movement um, I'd been very worked up overheating hysterical just really really in a bad place so yeah I did have concerns about the movement but I don't know if it was more just my guilt of I didn't like do anything that would have harmed the baby not intentionally but I was just worried that that amount of stress within my own body could cause harm and I just found myself kind of at burnout point and it just kind of exploded so I was just really anxious even though to be honest when I now think about it in hindsight the baby isn't normally active much at that time of day anyway so of course we did the thing where you go to the hospital you get your CTG and you get checked and that's when baby decides to move like crazy but at least you know it was reassuring and actually it was a good CTG, everything was fine, they did 10 minutes of monitoring and the monitor actually told them, it analysed it all, which I don't think I've ever had a CTG that's told them that it's good before, usually they are just the ones constantly checking it, but the, obviously they did still check it as well, but they actually have technology now where the computer kind of flashes to them and says, oh yes, this is a good reading, baby's fine. Um, so yeah, baby was absolutely fine and it has been fine ever since. It's been jiggling about like, I don't know what. I will um, insert some clips in a minute of just how crazy baby movement can be. Oh my God. <laughs> Jelly belly. It's going crazy. It's moving up here as well. It's everywhere. And that was near my belly button here. Oh! <laughs> Jelly belly. But I did speak then with the mental health midwife, which is the first time I've met her, which is crazy to think it's taken this long in pregnancy to actually be able to talk to her. But at the same time, I found out then that Fabian hasn't actually phoned her back, which doesn't really help. So it's kind of been a bit of error on their part that they've not been involved sooner, but at the same time, Fabian's not the best at actually then arranging stuff. But it does seem like they are starting to put support in place for me. I've actually been discharged I think from my community mental health team because they weren't really doing anything in all honesty but I'm still going to be seeing the perinatal mental health team and they're going to work with me to do a mental health birth plan which I'm really eager to do soon. I feel like I really need to start doing my birth plans in general soon 
I feel like, I don't know, I, I've seen so many people that are having babies that were due at the same time as me and just knowing my look and with how my babies like to just throw curve balls, I just would rather be prepared. So I want to start putting a birth plan together and I really think I need to have a mental health birth plan together because I did suffer postnatal depression last time and it was as a result of my stay in the hospital so I need to know that there are plans in place that then is going to prevent me from going downhill and not bonding with baby. That has been something I'm really really struggling with. I find it really difficult because to me it's almost like I can't help but see past the fact that in my head I think this baby's going to make my life more difficult because I'm already really struggling with the two kids I've got especially like last night for example both kids screamed the house down and did not want to sleep and so we're like splitting ourselves between both kids and stuff which is fine at the minute because there's two of us and two kids if they're doing that and then they're waking up a newborn baby I can just see how I'm going to get overwhelmed and it's just going to be difficult I just I can't see past the fact that things are going to be possibly more difficult and that life is going to have to change so it's hard for me to actually focus on the positives and I'm just really struggling with finding positives at the minute so I really need to kind of work on that because I really want to bond with baby it scares me in case I don't bond with baby it's just I'm I don't know how to bond with baby I I don't know how to be excited about a situation where I'm just concerned I'm just very anxious I think I'm just nervous but at the same time there's part of me that knows when you go from two children to three children that it's actually a lot easier because you're almost kind of used to the chaos and in some ways I agree I feel like our life can't get much more chaotic and crazy so surely it can't be that bad and I think sometimes when I'm t just tired and in pain it just kind of overwhelms me and especially with external factors so it's just trying to find ways to bond with baby and kind of really process like I just can't believe there is a baby inside me and it makes me sad because I really want to make the most of this and I don't know how to because I can't even wrap my head around it but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the, uh, the perinatal team will be in touch soon and then they will be able to discuss it and go through it with me and hopefully support me and help me over the next couple of months and possibly longer. Okay so I've rambled on it long enough now about my mental health and if you haven't already fallen asleep then we will get to the most interesting part and we will do my belly shot. Okay, so excuse the terrible lighting and the fact this top does not fit, but this is from the front and from my right hand side, I have got maternity like pyjama bottoms on right now and then from the left hand side, so it's starting to really, really pop out though. And then that is without my top and from the front and it's really... Yeah, it's just huge and baby tends to always sit at this side for some reason, I don't know why but it just likes to sit over here which I'm pretty sure all my babies have so I don't know what that's about, obviously it's just nicer at that side um, and then this is from the right hand side. So I hope you liked this video, if you did make sure to hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more motherhood content. So I've also linked some other videos down below that I think you guys will really enjoy and I have linked to my social media platforms so you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.